Okay, so now we're looking at the situation where things sort of go wrong, and you got to make him kind of, you got to fix it a bit. So he, he throws that forehand, I, I get past that, but as I go in here, and I'm blocking through, I would like it to turn under and end up like this. But you, at full speed, you don't always get that. Sometimes as I'm bringing it through, it just stays like that. And he wants to pull it through, and he might cut me. So I can't leave this arm or rely on it just to hold his arm. I gotta bring this one over and pinch, pinch behind the elbow. So now he can't, tries to pull it out, he can't. All right, he can't yank this through and cut me. All right, and now I can grab it this way, and either I can get this figure four position, this Kimura on the arm, or you know, if I can't do that, then I'll just start to to turn this under and, and disarm it from here. I can grab the wrist, I can fight it away. But what can also happen is he does pull it through, okay? And I keep a hold of it though. Since I earned my way in, I don't let go of that wrist, right? Because that's when he starts cutting me. So, so even though I was here, we're off of this. Back in, boom, off of this, we lost this, we lost this. I still get a hold of it and follow him in. And one thing I like to do is just what I'm doing is I'll put my forehead here, all right? So that I can focus on this wrist and it sort of crowds out his head, all right? And now from here, I can, I can maybe turn this under to get enough of it. He'll still be like that. So I might have to push my knee into it to bend it the rest of the way. Sometimes you'd like it to be here and be able to do a clean disarm that way. But you don't always get that. And since you have a long blade, use that length and use the flat side as leverage. So it means I get just this far, I can bring my knee to it and then bend it over. I put it hold on to it real good. So from here, I can't even bend it under. But unlike a knife, which is this long, I've got this much. So I can bring my knee to it and bend it. And it's only the flat and then the, the, the dull side, the dull edge. The sharp edge is still there. And now I can peel it through. And hit, shove him, and go for this blade. Okay, so my point is that you have to improvise. You have to, you have to uh, as you lose one part of the disarm, you have to still salvage what's most important, which is some control of that wrist and of where that blade can go. So he's here again. <laughs> It's like, ooh, the flip-flop knife fighter, nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. You ever notice too, whenever you see a video of people getting in the fights with flip-flops, it does not work out well. <laughs> don't, don't wear flip-flops anywhere where you might get into a fight. Okay. So he attacks, okay. boom, misses him here. I bring it through, I, I'd like to turn under like that, but I can't. He turns it, I like the trap is here again, but he pulls out. So I got to hold this wrist and I follow it here. And now, I like to turn it under and get this, but I can't get it that far. Alright? Yeah. Truth be known, I can even push it with this with this knee. Alright? Some people also like to grab it and they'll just do this with the flat of the form. Alright? You can do that too, as long as it's against the edge, the flat edge of the blade. So we're here. And he, yeah, off of this one here. I, I lost all these things. He's pulling out, turns it I follow it to here, and I'm trying to turn it. I even can't turn it. When all else fails, I still hold on to it, cross grip, and then I start hitting. Boom. Alright? And then if I can feed it over here, I'll then start to put together something to control that arm again. And I might take him down and disarm him. But when I end up fighting and hitting while I'm still holding on to this wrist, it might come down to that, okay?